Hi, welcome. My name is Balaji Krishna, and I'm going to be talking about Introduction to SAP Data Intelligence, DAT 111. Uh, I'm part of the data product management team on the data management uh, team. And in today's agenda, we're going to be talking about the customer landscapes in hybrid cloud deployments. So how cloud has kind of brought in the change across various customers within the different industries, how the hybrid landscape is playing a major role. Uh, and introduce you to the core functionalities of data intelligence. Uh, in data intelligence, we have these four main pillars, the metadata governance, data orchestration, and connectivity. Pipeline modeler, which uh, is one of the primary uh, features of the product. And here we focus on how you can use the ABAP platform integration to uh, move data from SAP systems, whether it is SAP ERP ECC or S4 uh, or BW or even non-SAP data sources. And finally, the fourth uh, pillar is being able to scale artificial intelligence and machine learning tool set. Once we complete the feature set on data intelligence, we're going to introduce you to some key use cases and scenario patterns, I kind of give you a preview on how other customers are using data intelligence and what are some of the common usage patterns that we've seen. And finally, talk to you about some customer success stories. So talking about the customer landscapes in the hybrid cloud deployments, if you look at this slide, uh, this is kind of very common across the different enterprise customers. And when we talk about enterprise customers, it starts with the applications that they've deployed within the landscape in the past three or four decades, starting from SAP ERP applications, non-SAP applications, the data that's that is generated in a relational world, in a transactional world. So most of the data is, we know it's in a row column kind of format, and then we build these data warehouses or data marts to be able to run analytics out of that data. And with the emergence of this digitalization in the past 10 plus years, we see that there are various new kinds of data signals that are being introduced, whether it's the spatial data or it is the unstructured data, semi-structured data. How do you bring in all these various non-SAP data, third-party data, and combine that with SAP data that is coming in from your various applications? and also not just limited to on-prem, but a combination of on-prem and cloud data stores. Uh, this is kind of a very complex landscapes and the consumption patterns for customers are what you see here on the right side, starting from it could be a customer experience kind of consumption or a typical digital supply chain kind of consumption, leveraging the digital core within SAP from a S4 standpoint, how do we introduce the uh, machine learning aspects, the data ingestion aspects that are available within the digital core or using the people management and the network spend management that comes with Ariba and success factors. So these are some of the things that we see across various organizations. And this complexity has kind of uh, caused a lot of confusion at customer landscapes in terms of how do they handle these various data types that is coming in and how do they make sense of not just reading the data, but actually combining the data and making sense out of those data elements. Some stats that we've seen from various uh, analysts in terms of the information management. And again, we are talking about information management, data management, which is a core of what you can do even before you can apply a BI analytics or a machine learning kind of consumption pattern on that data, which is coming from multiple data sources, disparate data sources. Uh, some uh, metrics that uh, we've seen around 86% of the companies are not getting the most out of their data. So although they've started collecting the data, they still haven't connected the data. So just, this is about connecting the data and making sense out of that. 74% of the companies are limited by the data complexity and the sprawl. So as they introduce more and more application systems, whether it is on-prem or new cloud applications that they're introducing, there is this challenge of the data complexity and the silo that they're building up as part of these various applications. And finally, around $14.5 is kind of the regulatory compliance cost, which is the limiting budget for innovation. Uh, so data governance is one of the key things that we introduce with data intelligence, and I'll talk about that as part of the following slides. But 
these challenges are kind of hindering how customers can leverage the information management in this new era. Uh, what we talk about when we uh, introduce the data intelligence is this virtuous cycle of innovation where we bring in data, which is coming from your cloud applications. So primarily leveraging the cloud platform, the data management, so everything underneath that HANA, HANA cloud and the various data assets that come from the SAP business technology platform and also the intelligent technologies where customers want to not just use the new uh, generation of applications, the S4 digital core, but also infuse machine learning into those applications. So it is very important for customers to introduce those machine learning into the core workflows or core business processes. And with data intelligence, we talk about how you can leverage the data science tooling that data intelligence provides for you to introduce these intelligent technologies and also being able to consume all these in a cloud native format since we build data intelligence using some of the core architecture pieces like Docker and Kubernetes. So if you talk about the evolution of data management in the enterprise landscapes across the past 20 plus years, so 30 years, uh, early on what we saw was the application integration. And again, this is where the SAP ERPs come into play uh, with SAP ECC or uh, the SOA kind of deployments, B2B applications, which have been there primarily to address the application needs, the transactional systems that customers rely on to run their business 24 by seven. And then we introduce, or the enterprises introduce this aspect of analytics integration or analytics usage from, I want to be able to consume reports, analytics dashboards from the data that is in my transaction system. So here we leverage the ETL processes using some of the tools that SAP EIM portfolio provides, whether it is SAP data services or smart data integration or SAP SLT landscape transformation server. So these combination of the ETL and analytics provided the BI consumption or the dashboarding capabilities for customers to understand and run their business in a more effective way. And finally, the third wave of uh, how the information management is uh, evolving and data management is supporting these uh, scenarios is by providing this data orchestration across the various uh, enterprise systems that you have, whether it is the big data landscape, the cloud landscape, the hybrid transactional and, and analytical processing landscapes, the various kinds of data types, not just limited to structured data, but also unstructured data, data in motion, streaming data, IoT data, uh, being able to provide this orchestration across the various uh, tool set that customers already have. And this is where we started the journey with Data Hub and now with Data Intelligence, we provided a completely new set of capabilities for being able to productionize and operationalize your machine learning uh, uh, projects. Uh, so one key thing I have to mention here is uh, the name change from Data Hub to Data Intelligence. Uh, today, what we have in the market is Data Intelligence and the older version of this was called Data Hub. So from a product standpoint, feature set standpoint, it is the same, it's a change in name, and we've introduced a few more concepts in data intelligence from a machine learning tooling standpoint. So let's look at what are the core functionalities of data intelligence and why it's important for customers to be able to leverage this in their enterprise landscapes. So what is data intelligence? Data intelligence allows you to build an end-to-end -end data processing leveraging the data ingestion, data integration capabilities, the data orchestration capabilities, and the metadata governance capabilities that the solution offers to be able to discover your data, be able to uh, refine the data, enrich, transform the data, reuse and curate the data that you have across the various uh, source systems that you're connected to. Uh, be able to govern the data in terms of, I want to be able to apply the right kind of data quality so that this data is trusted by my consumers. And finally, the orchestration of the data, whether the data artifacts were created in some other SAP tools like SAP Data Services or SLT uh, or Information Steward, being able to orchestrate those uh, uh, 
artifacts and extend them using the data intelligence uh, pipeline modeler. So the main pillars of data intelligence are the active metadata and governance where you can do things like data discovery, data profiling, metadata catalog, data preparation, intelligent processing, being able to leverage the data science tooling that comes with data intelligence, the Jupyter notebooks aspect that we provide, which is completely embedded, the machine learning scenarios, we'll talk about it in the future slides, data orchestration and monitoring, being able to have a single connection management, which allows you to establish the connection to your SAP and non-SAP data sources, one, one stop where you can define all the connections and then reuse it in other applications, whether you're building a pipeline or a graph, or you're building some self-service data preparation or metadata management tasks uh, across the various applications within data intelligence. And also the uh, related monitoring capabilities that are available in the data intelligence for the data modelers to be able to review what they're doing in terms of the pipelines that they're building and understand how the pipelines are working to get a sense of the optimization of the pipelines when they are moving um, hundreds of millions of rows from various systems. The data pipelining is one of the core uh, pillars where we talk about the data pipeline modeler. Uh, this enables the data ingestion, data processing, and the data enrichment, leveraging the different data transformations that we provide in the pipeline modeler tool. So let's cover each one of these in a little bit more detail, starting with the active metadata and the data governance uh, pillar. So from a data intelligence, data governance standpoint, well, we provide a metadata management capabilities, which allows you to build a catalog and get insights into your company's metadata. What does that mean? In terms of the capabilities of the metadata management and data governance, we allow you to explore the data that you have in your enterprise system by building a system-wide data catalog. Uh, when you define the connections in the data intelligence connection manager, you have the ability to enable the metadata so that it pushes the crawlers to the various systems that you've connected and starts reading the metadata across the various connectivities that you established in data intelligence. You can define a business glossary, which enables you to define terms and associate them with the related metadata explorer objects. Uh, we also provide ways to uh, have some kind of a crowdsourcing from a collaborative rating and comments. This kind of enables you to understand the value of the data and make that a trusted data based on the community that is using the data. Uh, we provide a self-service data preparation capabilities within data intelligence as part of metadata. This enables the business users to be able to build their own data flows, if you will, by uh, taking in some data that's coming from enterprise, combining that with other personal data that they have from say an Excel file or a CSV file and build joins across these two data sets. So this entire concept of self-service data preparation is not just limited to the data analysts or the data engineers, but now even the business users have an ability to build and extend the data flows, leveraging their self-service data uh, preparation capabilities. Uh, the next aspect of it is data lineage. As we go about building these pipelines, uh, we have customers looking at, I want to use data lineage as kind of a root cause analysis for some of my uh, usage patterns where I want to understand if I make a modification on one of my pipelines, what are the various uh, analytics consumption that are being impacted? So we use this metadata that is stored in the data intelligence metadata store to build data lineage when data is coming in, say, from a SAP ERP system or a BW system. And I also have other components coming in, say, from a cloud data lake like AWS S3. You build a pipeline with all these various tools, and you want to be able to understand how this data lineage uh, kind of goes across the various connectivities that you've established within the pipeline. Uh, we allow you to tag your labels. So this kind of helps in uh, uh, understanding the different data elements that you have. And it also provides the personalization which you want to uh, kind of share with your user community by classifying, classifying the data into using these labels. 
And finally, the tight integration of the modeling environments for data pipelines and workflows in terms of being able to integrate the metadata management, metadata governance with the pipeline model is something very important for a lot of customers. So as you can see here on the slide, it allows connectivity to various data sources, not just SAP, but non-SAP as well, being able to uh, consume the data from the various sources, the various connections that we've established in the data intelligence connection manager. So one of the additional things that we provided with the metadata governance is this ability to build the data quality rules and monitoring. So the rules dashboard is something that you can use to visualize the quality of the data. This allows you to easily build your own data quality rules and understand the quality of your data and determine where you need to improve and enhance the data. So here we've taken some of the capabilities that we have, we've had in some of previous tools or older tools in, in SAP and applied those capabilities in data intelligence from a data quality standpoint and data quality dashboard standpoint. Uh, this is where we can leverage, uh, for example, uh, pipeline modeler operator like data quality as a service or data anonymization, data masking kind of uh, data quality transforms and build your uh, quality rule, data quality rules and build your data quality dashboard uh, to set up a scorecard based on the object that you are reviewing. Switching to the next uh, component or next key feature of data intelligence, the data pipelining. The data pipelining and the data pipeline modeler allows you to build scalable and flexible flow-based applications to process, refine, and enrich data at the source. So here, what we're talking about is being able to push down the processing to where the data is actually stored to the source systems so that you're not moving too much data across the network is something really important. and Data intelligence enables these for several of the data connectivities that it has established as part of the connection manager. So going a little bit deeper into the pipeline modeler and the pipeline modeling experience, it provides you an ability to connect and integrate with the data, the processes, uh, be, it, be it machine learning uh, operators or other operators that we provide to build production quality pipelines. Uh, the data pipelines provide a concept of operators. So we have this uh, operators, which can be, I'm connecting to uh, Oracle as a source, or I'm connecting to AWS S3 as a source, or SAP as a source, or I have an operator which does some complex logic, like I want to run some Python algorithms on that, or I want to do use Node.js as my engine for building some complex logic. So being able to leverage these various operators that we provide, we out of the box, we provide around 250 predefined operators for various kinds of tasks, whether it's data ingestion or data integration, data connectivity, uh, processing of the data, data quality, machine learning, et cetera. Uh, we also have the ability to build custom operators. And this is where we have a strong ecosystem of partners who are building these operators, which serve a specific purpose. For example, it could be, I want to include a tax service or I want to include something like a OSI soft kind of service. So how can a partner come in and use the extensibility that's available within data intelligence from a operator standpoint and make that available as part of the, the pipeline more data intelligence pipeline model tool. The other important aspect of data intelligence is its scalability. And when we talk about um, cloud native product, it's important that we provide uh, features like auto scaling, being able to dynam dynamically scale your runtime based on the uh, jobs that you're ex executing. And this is where we've uh, container containerized data intelligence by leveraging Docker containers to build the application. And we also use Kubernetes as the container orchestration uh, framework for uh, having a distributed horizontal scaling of the runtime environment. Finally, the reusability aspect in terms of being able to create complex multi-step reusable data pipelines and operators. And also we provide something called a 
pipeline snippets for the most commonly used uh, scenarios. For example, one of the most commonly used scenarios that we see from customers is being able to read the data from SAP system, whether it's SAP ECC or S4 or BW and move the data into a data lake or a cloud data warehouse, uh, including data warehouse cloud or other non-SAP cloud data warehouses like Amazon Redshift or uh, Google BigQuery. Uh, so we provide these pipeline snippets, which help users build a very simple pipeline to read the data from SAP, uh, whether it is reading individual tables in the ECC system or CDS views in a S4 system and then write that into a target system, whether it's a cloud data lake or a cloud data warehouse kind of target. Uh, again, like I mentioned, we have around 250 operators for various tasks, and uh, you will see some of these demos and also the hands-on and some of the other tech ed sessions that I'm going to be sharing in the final slide. So one of the key things, as I mentioned, that is pretty popular in terms of the usage patterns from our customers is this ability to interact with SAP S4 and business suite systems. And this is where we provide specific operators and pipelines for you to uh, make this job much simpler in terms of, I use this pipeline snippet to read data from my SLT system or read data from my S4 system and then write it into say a downstream Kafka, which can extract the data from ECC and then from a Kafka, you can push it into any downstream applications you want, or you want to write it into a cloud data lake like AWS S3 or Azure data lake, uh, you will be able to do those very easily. And we have a specific session, which is DAT203, where my colleague uh, Tobias is going to be talking more about this specific scenario in terms of consuming the data intelligence about pipeline engine operators to extract SAP data and load that into cloud data lakes. Now, switching to the next uh, key functionality of uh, data intelligence, the data orchestration and monitoring. Here we talk about how you can connect, orchestrate and monitor processes across various systems. And what we mean by that is being able to leverage the connection management that I have been mentioning in the past few slides, uh, build a single layer of connections where you can build all the connections to your SAP, non-SAP systems, reuse them, reuse them across the various uh, tools, whether it's the metadata explorer or whether it's a pipeline modeler, build data workflows and also schedule them to run at specific times when you have new data that's coming in to be processed and moved from your source to target. Uh, we provide the central management of all system connections, being able to connect to diverse systems natively and remotely, whether it is on-prem or cloud systems, and also enable the uh, user access management to connect to all these various systems. Data workflows allows you to uh, do data orchestration across various uh, systems, whether it is being able to trigger execution of process chains in BW or transfer data from SAP BW to SAP HANA or execute remote jobs that uh, you've already created in SAP data services. Data services is a tool that has been used by several customers for almost 20 plus years. Uh, there are customers who have 20,000 plus jobs that they've been executing, some being able to read from legacy systems like IBM ZOS, uh, now you want to be able to reuse those, but extend that data to be able to uh, do some machine learning. So I want to read that data, combine that with some other data that's coming in from say a machine log or from social media or from IoT. I want to combine those and run some kind of a Python algorithm. Those, these are things that you'll be able to do using this um, orchestration capability within data intelligence. Uh, apart from that, we also provide connectivity to SAP Cloud Platform using the iFlows. So you can trigger these iFlows using the SAP Cloud Platform integration suite. And finally, support for big data workloads, uh, especially where customers already have a lot of uh, Apache Spark capabilities. So here we provide a Apache Levy operator where you can use this to uh, submit remote uh, Spark jobs to your Hadoop cluster or to your uh, EMR cluster or data proc cluster. 
Uh, along with all these various orchestration, we also provide an extensive monitoring capabilities, which allows you to view, control, and audit the data operations that are happening in this connected data landscape. So the monitoring uh, provides you to understand what's happening at a specific pipeline level, uh, to see where the resources are being consumed, if there is something that's failing, uh, try to understand what could have gone wrong so that you can do some kind of debugging as well at the data pipeline level. The next uh, uh, key feature that I'm going to be talking about is intelligent processing, where we talk about the uh, integration of the data set, data science tooling that we uh, enable with data intelligence. So let's look at what the data science tooling uh, avail feature set is in data intelligence. So here, we talk about what we've already provided from a data intelligence standpoint, some of the pieces like being able to identify your data, do the data pre-processing, um, and then come into the model creation and the deployment of the model. So these are things that can be done using the data science tooling or the machine learning scenario. So the first two pieces that you see here, the screenshots, those are things that are already covered as part of the pipeline modeler and the self-service data preparation. Because if you look at a machine learning project, almost 50% of the time is spent on massaging the data to ensure that you have the right data that a data scientist can look at for them to build the models and roll that into production. So here with data intelligence, machine learning capabilities and the data science tooling, we provide a machine learning scenario manager which allows you to automate your low value tasks. So being able to build those models and fine tune the models um, across the various data sets that you've already defined in your uh, um, connection manager or across the Jupyter notebooks that you've uh, built in the machine learning scenario manager. Uh, you have the ability to manage everything at once. So you have a machine learning scenario where you have your pipelines, you have your Jupyter notebooks, and you also have your runtimes that you've uh, executed these various uh, pipelines and various machine learning scenarios, and finally being able to deploy these to be inferred from an external consumption by exposing this as an API. So having being able to combine all these within a single scenario manager is kind of a unique differentiator that data intelligence provide specifically on the data science tooling capabilities. Uh, we also provide integration into Jupyter Labs. So Jupyter Labs is something which is pretty popular from an IDE standpoint, and we in include this in the data science tooling of uh, data intelligence. Let's quickly switch to the key use cases and the scenario patterns. So what are the different usage patterns that we're seeing at the customers? And here, what we've identified is uh, three kind of usage patterns. One is uh, around the business application and transformation where customers wants to streamline their innovation initiatives around the business application. So some examples like the customer risk intelligence with S4 HANA Cloud or the timesheet analytics that we built by combining data from Field Glass and BW are some of the examples of the business application transformation. And then we have the IoT ingestion and the orchestration where we have customers like Kaiser and Train Italia being able to bring in IoT data and combine that in a predictive maintenance kind of uh, use case or manufacturing product as a service where Kaiser wanted to go from a uh, air compressor company to air as a service kind of uh, company. So data as a service kind of company. So we enabled uh, customers like Kaiser and Train Italia to uh, kind of embrace these uh, as a service kind of ideas, leveraging data intelligence. And finally, the data warehousing and the big data warehousing uh, kind of usage where uh, a typical scenario is you want to get a customer 360 view, uh, you want to introduce marketing campaigns uh, where you're combining your structured data along with unstructured data with sentiment data that you're bringing in from social media. And also in the utilities space, we are able to uh, do things like renewable energy and production simulation with some of the utilities customers that we've had. So these are some of the key patterns and usage scenarios that we've seen. And in the next slides, let's look at some of the customers where they've deployed some of these uh, uh, scenarios. So the first one is the renew renewal simulation center where we worked with a utilities customer in a large energy provider in Germany. 
the primary objective that they wanted to achieve was to be able to provide a simulation dashboard to the local municipalities where they could control the current energy production in the territory, but also understand the types of renewables that were involved and then simulate different possible investment scenarios. So here the key uh, challenge was for the customer to be able to bring in data from various siloed data sources, whether it's grid data coming in from SCADA infrastructure stored in OSI systems or the streaming data that's coming from the energy production or master data that's coming from uh, SAP ERP and SAP CRM system. Uh, also the energy consumption, which is coming from SAP IR industry uh, solutions, utilities, and being able to combine all these various data. So as you can see here in the pipeline, we were able to combine these various data sources and use Python to build these uh, scenarios like I want to calculate the energy production. So that's where we combine the data coming in from the Kafka CRM and the SAP ISU and also another uh, Python operator for calculating the capacity per municipality by combining the data, which is in OSI soft stored in Hadoop and also the asset management data from SAP ERP system. Finally, use R to run these grid load predictions and then apply uh, analytics cloud dashboard to run these simulation to understand the usage of these renewable energies across the various uh, data signals that we captured. Moving to the next use case, uh, we have a predictive quality in a manufacturing plant. Here, the project with uh, data intelligence was being able to understand the data that's coming from the molding operation. So here you have the information from the molding or show floor, uh, sh show floor where you have the sensor data that's coming in from the molding process. You have the infrared camera that is capturing the end product and storing that image in a Hadoop system. And then we have Kafka streaming that sensor data and correlating this data with the enterprise data that's in HANA and also leverage, for example, PAL algorithms on the predictive aspect of it. Uh, finally, build a smart quality application which combines all these various data sources and provides an insight from a predictive quality standpoint to, to ensure that we have the right quality of data that is being delivered at the end of this uh, molding process automation. So this is another uh, scenario that we have seen where customers are able to leverage data intelligence. Uh, the next one is a pure consumer kind of application with a customer 360 where uh, you have a consumer uh, who's uh, doing some exercises and uh, we also track the online activity of this uh, uh, consumer. That data is being loaded into a cloud data warehouse like Snowflake. We have the customer 360 information from a customer experience uh, system, which is running on HANA. And we use these Python machine learning training and execution algorithms to combine this Snowflake data and the HANA data, and then predict consumer behavior and analysis across the various data sets from uh, providing a 360 degree view of the uh, consumption experience for this uh, specific user. Now switching to some of the customer success stories that we have, uh, we have several customers that are currently using uh, data intelligence at various uh, uh, deployment stages. Some of the key ones that I want to highlight and all of these customers have spoken at various SAP conferences, whether it is Kaiser with their compressor story or whether it is Kaiser where it was a pure machine learning scenario or Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, which actually won a SAP Innovation Award in 2020, where they wanted to combine data from their SAP systems, which is their finance system, SRM system, but with non-SAP data that is coming from uh, PennDOT system, Department of Transportation system, being able to combine those and realize insights based on those various scenarios. So we have a rapidly growing customer base, very successful scenarios who are coming for more and more of data intelligence from multiple new use cases as well. And finally, from upcoming innovations, we are looking at more deeper application integration from a ABAP integration standpoint. We are already providing content and templates out of the box, which makes the deployment much easier. 
other capabilities like data governance and data monetization from a metadata management and data governance standpoint. These are some of the key blocks where we are uh, introducing new innovations uh, in 2020 and going forward in uh, 2021 and 22. And finally, uh, I want to bring your attention to some of the other relevant uh, tech -ed sessions on this data intelligence and data management uh, track. Uh, I want you to take a few minutes to read through this, definitely encourage you to not just go through the lectures, but also the hands-on that some of my colleagues are providing to be able to completely utilize the data intelligence product. And finally, I encourage you to continue a learning experience at uh, TechEd uh, with these links. Uh, we have a huge community that is uh, part of this uh, TechEd and the SAP community. So be a part of the community and enhance your journey, learning journey. With that, I want to thank you for attending the session. Mm -hmm.